Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Today I will read from a book titled Ellsworth Kelly Postcards, edited by Ian Berry and Jessica Eisenthal, and published by the Tank Teaching Museum at Skidmore College and Delmonica Books. Ian Berry wrote, Wildly regarded as one of the most influential artists of the 20th century, Ellsworth Kelly is known for paintings, sculptures, drawings and prints that are masterworks in line, form and color. Having played a pivotal role in the development of post-war abstract art, Kelly's inventive approach to abstraction draws on found composition and observations of the physical world. In a rarely seen aspect of his practice, Kelly made approximately 400 postcard collages over the course of six decades. Some were exploratory musings, while others served as studies for larger works in other media, or a means to revisit important concepts from years prior. Ellsworth Kelly Postcards is the first survey of Kelly's postcard collages, starting with his first monochrome painted on a postcard in 1949 and ending with his final collages of crashing ocean waves made in 2005. Revisiting clear taxonomies of abstraction and representation, these works show an unbounded space of creative freedom and provide important insight into the way Kelly saw, experienced and translated the world in his art. Many were sent to friends and colleagues as personal correspondences, though many more were kept in his studio. Revealing an unrestrained curiosity and the breadth of his practice, Kelly's postcard collages are as humorous and intimate as they are formal and discerning. Kelly began his studies at Pratt Institute in New York from 1941 to 1942, then continued at the School of the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston from 1946 to 1948. While on his tour of duty in Europe during World War II, he visited Paris for the first time. He returned with funds from the GI Bill in 1948 and stayed until 1954. Those years in France were formative. This was when Kelly first painted and collaged on picture postcards, which at the time he mostly sent to artist and friend Ralph Coburn. In 1954, Kelly moved from Paris to New York, where he rented a studio in Coenty's Slip in downtown Manhattan, as part of a community of artists that included Robert Indiana, Agnes Martin, James Rosenkist and Jack Youngerman. The influence of that fertile time can be seen in several New York postcards of the 1950s. Throughout the literature on Kelly's oeuvre, scholars have consistently noted the cyclical process of his art making, his tendency to revisit ideas from years, even decades earlier. In keeping, the production of the postcard collages was rhythmic and episodic, punctuated by other artistic and life activities. One can trace the years of prolific and less prolific output to align with important life events, including new bodies of work, retrospectives and studio moves. For instance, Kelly made a great number of cards in 1970, the year he moved to Spencertown, New York, and in 1974, while traveling in Europe following his 1973 Museum of Modern Art retrospective. Mapping the postcard collage production onto a timeline of Kelly's life and work also reveals that the postcards were not a part of his general studio practice, but rather constituted a kind of freedom from the studio. In this sense, they comprise a compilation of experiences, a journal of travel, creative play and relationships. The decade of the 1970s includes a significant number of cards made in St. Martin in the Caribbean, where he would travel to stay with artist Jasper Jones, who had a home on the island. The mid-1980s, particularly around the time he met photographer Jack Shear, who would become his life partner, was another prolific period for Kelly's postcard collages. This intensity of collage production waned in the 1990s, in part due to the decline in print quality of mass-produced picture postcards, which Kelly did not appreciate. The postcard collages use a wide variety of found materials, including pieces of vinyl records, newspaper clippings, ticket stubs, wine labels and even sections of his own prints. 
For example, in 1964, Kelly used to torn proofs from his own lithographs in a series of postcard collages with Paris monuments, a studies for sculptures. This source material is discussed in a new essay for this book by Dr. Tricia Pike. Her essay reviews Kelly's biography and outlines key features of his iconic work that can be found in specific examples of postcard collages. Dr. Linda Kletch surveys the advent of the picture postcard itself and points to the use of postcards by modernist artists of the early 20th century, from Art Nouveau and Futurism to Surrealism and Dada. Dr. Jessica Eisenstahl focuses on the mostly hidden, double-sided aspect of the postcard collages. She reveals that Kelly not only used the backs of the cards for personal notes, but also to continue compositions and create even more experimental and, at times, teasing imagery. The book begins with the artist's own words from a brochure that accompanied the exhibition Kelly organized from MoMA's collection in 1990, Artist's Choice, Outworth Kelly, Fragmentation and Single Form. In this essay, Kelly discusses breaking up the visual world into fragments and provides key insights into the ways of seeing and presenting his art. The vast majority of the postcard collages in the plates section of this book have never before been reproduced. Over the course of this project, new works were discovered in the artist's archive and others came to light from personal collections. Ask for the book at your local bookstore and see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.